Okay, welcome, welcome once again. In this video, we're gonna talk about Wim plugins. Okay, so in order to install a plugin, we need to know what form it comes in. All right, so it can be a single .wim file, a Wim ball file, a set of files in directories that follow an expected structure. Okay, a specific structure. So a single .wim file is supposed to be placed in the .wim slash plugin directory and that plugin directory it has not been made yet all right in our system you know at least I know that so if I la here you can see that we don't have any .wim directory we have .wim info directory and we have .wim rc directory but we don't have any .wim directory okay and a Wimball file can be installed by opening it in the Wim and then running colon source and then percentage sign and then the Wim plugin name. All right. And a set of files in the standard directory layout can be installed either by copying them to dot Wim or using a plugin package manager. Okay. So the idea is that most people like to use the Wim plug plugin manager. Some of them, you, you know, like to use pathogen. So the idea is that in today's video, um, we'll use one of them. So let's say that we use pathogen. Okay. So now basically you can say that what is the difference between manually installing and um, installing through a package manager and what is the advantage of package manager over manually manual installation, right? So the problem with manually installing a plugin is that it's rather difficult to remove a plugin, okay? So you often have several different files in different directories uh, and you have to manually find them and obviously after finding them, then you would remove it. Then while in the um, case of this package manager, you have just a specific directory or a specific folder in which you can just go and you can just figure out all the directories and then you can install okay so now uh, in this video i'm going to show you that how you can install a uh, pythogen all right so the idea is that all the commands would be uh, in the description that i would use here and um, along with that uh, there is another thing that i want to share that some of the thing actually most of the things that we're going to do um, they are basically related to git and we have already installed git on this system and uh, that that was basically a course that we have done previously on our channel so if you have not git installed on your system you don't need to watch the whole course just go ahead and watch the uh, you know few minutes uh, in the in the earlier part and from there you can learn how to install git on your system and then you can come back okay so the link to that Git course that we have created, it was approximately uh, 1.75 hours, okay? So the length of that course is approximately 105 minutes, okay? So um, I'm gonna put the link in the description for that course so that you can go and you can watch that course as well and you can learn something about Git, okay? So now uh, let's start the installation of Pathogen on our system so let me uh, zoom in a little bit okay and uh, let me just clear it so first of all what you've got to do is that you have to basically uh, paste this kind of command in order to install a pathogen okay so it would create the dot vim directory which is already not there in our system and it would basically install the pathogen in there okay so we hit enter and you can see that it starts to install pathogen okay so first of all it would download it and it would uh, basically install it on a specific path of dot vim uh, inside the home folder dot vim slash autoload slash pathogen dot vim okay here uh, it would download it and install it okay after creating a directory you can however manually create it and you can manually download it from the github and then you can install it as well so now you can see that it has not given us any sort of error it means that the directory has been created and pathogen has been installed so how do we know that so we write here la and um, somewhere here you'd be able to see the dot vim directory yes here it is so 
if I go inside the dot vim directory like this and uh, if I ls here uh, we have two folders here auto load and bundle so the idea is that uh, inside this bundle directory or bundle folder you are going to uh, basically install plugins okay so now what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to uh, first of all I'm gonna come out of it okay uh, like this let me just come out of this all right so now we have come out of this so now we have here dot vim rc file this is basically a configuration file if you don't know we have dot vim or uh, we have a separate video on vim rc um we'll put the link in the description so you can go and watch the vim rc video as well so we are going to edit this uh, dot vim rc file okay so in order to edit it what we're going to do we're going to open it inside the vim folder okay so we write here vim rc so remember that this is a configuration file all right so in order to write here we'd insert and uh, basically we'd add something inside of this file and uh, let me just basically paste something here so that's what you need to write down here execute pathogen high uh, and then the hash sign and then infect and then uh, double brackets okay so this is how you call it okay so now uh, we're just gonna save it and we're gonna quit and we're gonna come out of it okay so now we have added that one line inside the dot vimrc file as well so now we can basically go inside of it and we can install any plugins that we want so um in order to install plugins inside the vim we can actually go to google and we can type here vim plugins okay so let's search the internet and let's see that which are the top plugins and let's try to install them okay so we have here the first article on 10 essential vim plugins right so what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go here and we're gonna install one of the plugin okay so i'm gonna just show you that how you can install that plugin so you can see that basically uh, this first plugin is fzf uh, it's it's uh, you know it works on a substantial code base usually involves traversing several files at a time uh, fzf stands for fuzzy finder and works similarly to the go to anything menu in the sublime text allowing you to open a file instantly after typing a rough representation of its name okay so basically uh, it's a, a WIM plugin okay um, and uh, you can actually use it so in order to install it so what you've got to do here you can see that we have this github link let's install this light line okay so uh, it is a plugin that basically uh, used to replace the st uh, status line okay so we are just going to click on it and you'd be able to see that it would take us to the github okay so now there are basically two ways you either download it and then you basically download it inside the bundle directory or you can actually clone it using the git command because we have already installed the git so what you can do is that you can go ahead and you can uh, check out the video that we have suggested inside we have taught you git okay so the link is in the description go ahead if you don't know what what git is and how to install it go ahead watch that video all right so what we're going to do here that we're going to go to the dot vim uh, folder and then inside of this we are going to go to the bundle folder okay so now inside of this bundle folder we are going to install our um, you know plugins okay so in order to install plugin what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna write here git clone and then I'm gonna paste here the link of the plugin okay so now if I hit enter uh, you can see that basically it says cloning into lightline.win okay so now you can see that it is basically it has started to download uh, the plugin and it would download that plugin right inside the bundle okay 
So you can see that there is another plugin uh, it named as uh, Wim multiple cursors. So using this plugin, you can actually have multiple cursors inside Wim. So if we click on it, this is the link. Okay, so we will repeat the process. So we'll just copy it and we'll come to our terminal and then we can basically uh, just paste it. But before uh, this link, we've got to write here git clone. Okay, so now we hit enter and you can see that it, it is basically cloning it. And after doing that, after downloading it, um, it would basically install it inside the uh, bundle folder. So the idea is that all the plugins that you need to keep them inside the bundle folder. So they are very easy to find and they are very easy to uh, remove and add. Okay. So that is the one prime reason. That's why you have that bundle folder right here. Okay. So I hope you have got the point. So now uh, it would take some time and after some time it would install it. So we will wait. Okay, so now that uh, has been installed as well. So if now we if we ls here, you can see that this is the Wim multiple cursors. Okay, so in that way, you can actually install, you know, tens of plugins uh, related to Wim uh, using pathogen. Uh, and then you can actually condition the Wim RC file that how you want to use these plugins. Okay, so that's it from this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. You have learned something new. For written articles, you can visit our website linuxin.com and I will see you in the next video.